Grace and peace to you all, people of God. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together for truly we serve an awesome God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Truly, we thank God for another day. People of God, just a reminder about the 31-day um, prayer call for the month of May. And I also want to make sure that I bring correction um, to the previous video where I did put a um, number down in the description box, but I have changed it because we have changed numbers. Um, but this will be May 1st through May 31st, 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And that number would be 717-908-1974. The code would be 9419065. And, the, and it would also be in the description box below. Today, people of God, <clears throat> I want to encourage you. And, oh, before I encourage you through the word of God, I want to make sure that I bring clarity. I thank God for a um, woman of God asking me a question about the um, when you forgive someone um, pertaining to the um, video, the previous video. And um, she began to ask some questions. So I want to make um, bring some clarity because even before she contacted me, I was kind of having some kind of, you know, feelings about God. I hope I made myself clear because I know sometimes that when you're talking about unforgiveness, that the, um, the enemy can get into that and have us deceive. Um, feeling like just because you forgave somebody that now we can start, you know, hanging out. We can start doing the things that we used to, used to do. That does not, you know, that does not signify that I have forgiven you because sometimes people will use against you. Well, if you forgave me, why can't we do these things again? Just because you forgave somebody, we don't, we, we cannot become ignorant to the enemy's devices. However, just because you forgave someone, they still can have a hidden, uh, uh, excuse me, a hidden agenda if they are being used by the devil. And so we have to ask God for wisdom and understanding, but you must realize that when you forgive someone, that does not make us a puppet for the enemy and that doesn't make us passive. Hallelujah. That don't cause us to be passive, people of God. We always have to remember that, you know, that we are living in a spirit world and the devil will use whomever make themselves available for him for him to use. And so just because somebody did you wrong, you have to forgive them. Yes, that's a must. We must forgive them. But that doesn't mean <clears throat> the only way that they can tell that I forgave them is now, you know, oh, I, I, I'm making sure that, you know, we can do the same things that we, we used to do. Because there are some things that God will allow to happen in your life that it brings separation. So I want to make sure that we are clear on those things because there are many people that are out here that will try to deceive you. And they will, you know, they will say, well, if you, like I said before, if you forgave me, then, you know, why can't we do this and why can't we do that? When God has called you into a place of separation. Amen. Hallelujah. And separation is not a bad thing, people of God. We can't look at things, you know, when God um, calls us to separate from people, um, we call it, uh, you know, we, we we feel like that's not God. Um, that's not true because the Lord will bring separation in your life sometime for growth for you. And it could be growth for the other person. Amen. So people of God, I want to encourage you in the uh, book of um, John, the 10th chapter. We're going to start at the... 27th verse and the word of God reads, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. So Jesus was um, letting, the, letting the Jews know that my sheep, those that belong to me, they hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. And so when you're following Jesus Christ, that means that Jesus Christ is the one that's going ahead of us. And he will make things clear and he will make things right for us. And that's why we must follow him. Hallelujah. Just like when we look in the book of John, the 10th, I mean, the, still in the um, 10th chapter, and you look at the fourth verse, it said, and when he put forth his own sheep, he goeth before them and the sheep follow him for they know his voice. So when you start following, following Jesus Christ, because you know his voice, he will lead and he will guide you. And so he had to let the, the, those Jews know because they began to question Jesus Christ and began to ask him, you know, you know, why, why can't you make it plain to us that you are Christ? And so Jesus began to let them know the reason that the reason why you don't understand because you're not my sheep. 
And so many are not the sheep of Jesus Christ because they will not hear his voice. They don't obey the voice of God and they won't follow after him. And so the Bible began to tell us, he said, and I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. This, this, this is some of the benefits that we, this is one of the benefits that we get when we follow Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. When we are a sheep of the Lord. Hallelujah. He said that they were, we will not perish. Hallelujah. Because why, why are we not going to perish? Because when you are a sheep of Jesus Christ, you are going to obey the voice of God. It does not matter how you feel. It does not matter how you got upset with what God said or whatever, whatever, whatever the servant said concerning God's word. A sheep is going to always follow the voice of Jesus Christ. It does not matter how it feels. I know a lot of times when truth come, truth come, it doesn't make you feel good a lot of times, especially when you're doing things that you like to do when it's against God. And But these are some of the benefits that the Lord began to tell us. He said, I will give you eternal life. Come on. Who don't want to live forever? And then he tell us, and he said, we shall never perish. Then he said that no man can pluck you out of my hand. Hallelujah. You will not be moved. When you stay with the Lord Jesus, that's why he said, before I put you forth, he said, I go before you. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ will make the way clear for you. That's why we must follow him. That's why we must obey his voice. Whatever the Lord is telling you to do, you must obey the voice of Jesus Christ. He will not lead us astray. His whole purpose is to lead us. Into that righteous place with him, that holy place with him. And so he tells us, he said, my father, which gave them me is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. Why? I and my father are one. So once you get into the hands of the Lord and nobody can pluck you out of his hand, you are in safety. Hallelujah. Because Jesus will keep you. He will protect you. And so he began to let us know that my sheep, they are going to hear my voice. Even when it hurts, even when you don't quite understand and you know that the Lord is speaking, you begin to follow after him. Hallelujah. No matter what. And so even when we look at the book um, back where well, we're still in the 10th chapter, when we look at the fifth verse, because this is what Jesus is telling you. When you belong to him, he said, and a stranger, stranger, will they not follow, but will flee from him for they know the voice for, excuse me, for they know not the voice of strangers. So he began to let us know, see a stranger, when you belong to God, a stranger, you're not going to hear because you're not going to know the voice of a stranger because you're not entertaining the stranger's voice, but you are, you are being, you know, you're being fully committed to Jesus Christ that I hear his voice. I hear his voice through his word. I hear his voice in prayer. So he said, my sheep know my voice and I know them and they follow me. When you follow Jesus Christ, it's not about you. It's all about him because he wants his people to know that you can't follow a stranger. Because the stranger is going to say the opposite than what Jesus Christ says. That's why they are a stranger. And so the word of God begins to tell us when we go to the book of 2 Corinthians, the, the, the 11th chapter, the Bible says, for such as false apostles, these are the strangers. Because they're not saying what God said. Deceitful workers. Transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ and no marvel for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. See, the Lord is beginning to let you know how Satan can operate. And that's why we can't be deceived because he can come into a form of the light. And the Bible even tells us, and it says, therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Because you got many that's going to be doing the works. 
but they are deceivers, deceivers. They are strangers. And that's why in the book of Matthew, the seventh chapter, the seventh chapter, I want to think the 16th verse, the Bible said that you will know them by their fruit. That's why he began to warn us about the false apostles, the false prophets. Because they're not going to say exactly what God says. They will begin to justify what the truth is. Because why? The Bible says deceiver workers. Satan is a deceiver. And so he would get into those and he will raise up his own apostles, his own prophets, his own minister to deceive or try to deceive the body of Christ. But Jesus let you know, but my sheep, they going to know my voice. Why? I'm spending time with him. And Jesus is going to say what his words say. That's why the scriptures say, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come unto the Father unless we go by Jesus Christ. So we got to obey and follow after Jesus. And so he lets you know that a stranger, they will not follow. These are the strangers that's being raised up in this hour to tell you that it's okay. But let's go to the book of, of Deuteronomy, the Old Testament. Because let's see what they had to do when, 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 when the deceivers or the strangers began to talk to Israel. The 13th chapter starting at the first verse and the Bible says, if there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams and give it the sign or a wonder and the sign or, or the wonder come to pass. Now, I want you to remember that they will give you signs and wonders and they will come to pass. That's just like in, in the book of Matthew, the seventh chapter, when Jesus Christ began to say that, yeah, you did all these works in my name. You heal, you did, you, you, you did signs and wonders, but he tell them, he said, depart from me. You know, I know you not. And that's why he tells us in the 16th verse, he said, you will know them by the fruit. Cause you're not going to have me going against what God said, but it's in Jesus Christ's name. Why certain things that they'll be able to perform. So he just told us right here, this is in the old Testament. And he began to say, whereof he spent unto thee saying. Now, because he worked in, they worked in signs and wonders, but see, this is where they mess up at. When the Bible said, let us go at the other gods, which thou has not known and let us serve them. Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet. Anytime somebody telling you to go worship another God or sin against God, God, the Bible tells us, they say, do not hearken to their voice. The same thing that we're saying in the book of 2 Corinthians, the 11th chapter about the false prophets and how Satan can transform himself into an angel of light. But his whole agenda is to get you to go against what God's saying and begin to say, oh, that's all right. This is all right. But guess what? That's why Jesus said, my sheep knows my voice. Why? Why are you going to know his voice if you know his word? Because Jesus' voice is the word of God. He said, I am the word. So when you know my word, that's why you can hear Jesus Christ's voice. That's why when certain people tell you certain things, it doesn't register with you well because you know the voice of your father, which is Jesus Christ. And when you get connected to the true vine, there are certain things that will come before you and you'll be like, mm, there's something in my spirit and register. Yes, that's why he said, try the spirit. And that's why we're going to know the spirit. Why? You're going to line things up with the word of God. I'm not going to tell you anything that deviates you from Jesus Christ. I have you going in error. Because the greater one is inside of me. So that's why I must obey what he said. Because I have presented my body as a living sacrifice unto him. That he can use me for his glory. And so you will know the sound of the righteous because that's why he said, my sheep knoweth my voice. Strangers, they're not going to follow because a stranger is going to tell you a little bit of truth and some lies up in there as well. Begin to make you comfortable 
with the things that you do. But the word of God said, Jesus said, my word is powerful and it's quick. It's alive, sharper than any to a sword. That means that his word come to bring purpose in your life. That's why sometimes we get upset with the word. Why? He said it's powerful and it's alive. And so, hallelujah, your flesh don't want to abide. That's why we can't worship him in our flesh. That's why he said we must worship him in truth and in spirit. And so you got to know that his word is powerful. That's why you upset. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why the enemy wants you to turn a deaf ear to the truth. And he wants you to compromise. And he wants you to say, well, that's all right. That's not what it means. It means just what it says. So the word of God begins to say, thou should not hearken unto the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams. For the Lord your God proveth you to know whether ye love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Honey, when you love the Lord with all your heart and with all your soul, it's your purpose to seek after him is your purpose to study. It's your purpose praying. If you don't understand something, you want clarity. Honey, if you go to God, God will give you clarity. He will give you understanding of what you might be battling with. And so he began to tell us, he says, Ye shall walk after the Lord your God. Because see, anybody who's trying to have you serve other gods, they are against God. They are against God. It doesn't matter if you see them. Look, I saw them working signs and wonder. They should, guess what? If they operate in signs and wonder, they should be pointing me to Jesus Christ and nothing else. So just because they're working in signs and wonder, that don't mean that they're telling the truth when they're going against the word of God and they're going against what Jesus Christ says. So the agenda is not going to point to me Point me to other God. No, it's going to point me to the living and all wise God, which is Jesus Christ. So the word of God says, ye shall walk after the Lord. Ye shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his what? Obey his voice. Same thing in the New Testament. My sheep know my voice. Hallelujah. Stranger, they ain't going to follow but they're going to follow what I say. Same thing he was telling Israel. Hear my voice and I know them. When you hear his voice, you're going to obey his voice. So he said, and obey his voice and ye shall serve him and cleave unto him. And that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death because he has spoken to, he has spoken to turn you away from the Lord, your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt. And redeem you out of the house of bondage to thrust thee out of the way which the Lord thou God command thee to walk in. Now in the Old Testament. God was letting them know that they're going to be punished. For causing you. To go astray. And serve other gods, the ones that he brought out of Egypt. He said, so shall thou be put, wait a minute, so shall thou, so shall thou put the evil away from the midst of thee. Now, the Bible says, if thy brother, the son of thy mother, or thy son, or thy daughter, or the wife of thy bosom, or thy friend, which is in thy own soul, entice thee, tempt thee secretly, saying, let us go and serve other gods which thou hast not known, thou not thy fathers. God began to let you know, I don't care who it is. Back in the Old Testament, he began to let them know that if any of these, it don't matter who it is, family, Friends, it does not matter. When you start reading further down, the Bible began to tell you that they should be stoned. Back in the Old Testament, this is the Old Testament. And this is what they, this is what they did to those that tried to lead them astray from God. 
But now in the New Testament, this is what we're required today. But I want to show you that these things happen because entertaining the wrong sound, entertaining the wrong voices, that begin to compromise and begin to justify why we can do this, why we can serve other gods, why we can bow down to other gods. When Jesus said, no, I won't have no other God before me. I am a jealous God. And when you put another God before him, he becomes jealous because there's no God greater than him. And so this is what he began to show Israel. Now for us as believers in this hour, what we are supposed to do when those false apostles and those, and Satan begin to transform himself into an angel of light and he's saying the wrong thing. He's using people in the earth to say the wrong thing. They're compromising with sin and they begin to tell us their favorite scripture. All have sinned and came short of the glory of God. Yes, we all have sinned. Yes, we all have came short of the glory of God. But I can't tell you to stay there. None of us are supposed to stay there. We are supposed to repent and turn from our evil and wicked ways. And we are supposed to submit ourselves to Jesus Christ because he said, my sheep know my voice. Hallelujah. And a stranger we will not follow. So we can't just continue to go on that scripture. Oh, they act like they ain't never sinned. I've sinned. Many of you sinned. All of us have sinned. Yes. But I'm not in that same place because I made up in my mind that I want to live forever. And Jesus said in his word, those that's going to live forever, my God, those are the ones that's following me. And they're going to obey my voice. So we can't sit here and justify and many will begin to tell you that it's okay, I did it. It don't matter if I did it. Yes, I've done many sins. But it does not matter what I have done back then. I have to tell you the truth now. Yes, I will talk with you and I'll begin to tell you. I see where you're at, even especially if it's something that I battle with. Yes, I'm going to talk to you and let you know, yes, I went through that. But baby, let me tell you how you can come through. Let me tell you how you can be delivered. Let me tell you how you can be set free. I'm not going to continue to be back on the things I used to do just because you don't want to come out of sin. No, my sheep knoweth my voice. Hallelujah. And a stranger. This is what we got to do right now. As Jesus commanded us, he said, and a stranger, will they not follow, but will flee from him? Come on. If you know somebody saying something wrong, you know they're teaching you in the, uh, the wrong way and teaching you in error. The Bible says that we flee from that. Why? I hear my daddy's voice and my daddy's voice don't sound like that voice. My daddy is not trying to compromise my sins because he loves me. That's why he said, I chastise those that I love. Just like see people of God, it's just that God will give you the heart to minister to people. He will give you that love to minister to people. See, some people don't want you to say nothing about their sin. Well, that's not scripture. Even when Jesus Christ was ministering to those Samaritan women at the well, he did not call her, he didn't call her out of her name. That some people might have would have called. But he ministered to her and said, yes. And that when you with now, it's not your husband. But he didn't, he didn't call out her name. But guess what? He ministered the word to you. He said, because I want to give you this living water. So when you are a servant of God, you got to bring truth. Why? Because I want you to, to, to come. To come unto a man that I know that can save you. Can set you free. And deliver you from all your sins. His name is Jesus. So we don't compromise with sin. Just like the woman who committed adultery. Yes, Jesus forgave her for her sin. But he said, go and sin no more. See, it's certain scripture we like to hold on to. But you got to read further. Because why? Jesus Christ's word has already been established in this earth. And whatever he says is going to come to pass. It's going to come to pass. Just like the Lord began to say, you know, a lot of people like to say, oh, in prayer, they say, Lord, your word will not return back unto your void. You're right. It will not. Whether you're doing good or evil, it's not coming back to him void. But it's going, it's going to accomplish where to he has already sent it. And so he tells us, he said, a stranger, mm -mm, you flee from him. 
Come on, come on. You know, you you know, you sit around certain people, and you know they justify your sin. They say, well, you know, um, you know, uh, I, I, I'm battling in that too. I don't care if they're battling in that too. That don't that don't make nothing right. They're not gonna be standing up there um, with Jesus when Jesus begin to tell you either enter in or depart from Him. They're not gonna be standing up there. But see, we like to hang around people like that. We like to surround ourselves. We like to call certain people that we know gonna come. That's gonna get on our side. No, baby, I want the truth, whether the truth hurt or not. I want to hear the truth. And I know sometimes it takes you a little while, but I want to encourage you that your time is now. Your time is now. So this is what Jesus Christ is commanding us to do. That when you know, you hear the voice of a stranger. And you know they ain't saying what Jesus Christ said. He said, I need you to flee from me. And let me tell you one of the things we begin to make an excuse about. Because sometimes we look at leadership. <clears throat> and we begin to look at other leaders. And we begin to say, well, I know this pastor, he did that. And this pastor, he did this. And, and so forth. And, you know, ain't nothing happened to him. Nothing might be happen to him with man. But sweetie, he got the answer to God. The Bible tells us, he said, those that know to do right and don't shall be beaten with many stripes. That's the word of God. Know to do right and don't do it. The devil is a liar. Because I want to encourage those that I know that God is going to raise up to do a mighty work for him. Don't you let nobody deceive you. There's a price to pay when you do things out of the will of God. When God has called you into a certain office and a certain position, the Bible said that we are supposed to be examples. Examples of Jesus Christ, not making excuses of your sin. If you know you are dealing with a type of sin before you get in that position, you need to get before the Lord and quit playing with it, quit looking at other people. Because Jesus Christ is the judge. He said his way is straight and narrow. It's a very straight way. And that straight is strict. So we don't justify our wrongdoing. Let's make sure that we be those examples that Jesus Christ said for us to be. That they can follow. That they can see Jesus Christ in you. And they can have that hunger, that hunger and thirst after righteousness. And be filled with the presence of Jesus Christ. My sheep. Know my voice. My sheep know my voice. Jesus said you know his voice. And you know when he's speaking. And you know when he's speaking through individual. You know it's the voice of Jesus Christ. Because he will use a body. That makes themselves available for him to use. So it's time out for fighting against the word. But let's come unto the Lord. And let's hear his voice. And let's follow after what he said for us to follow because many are rising up in this hour as false prophet because it's all ordained of Satan. I just read to you in 2 Corinthians where God is letting us know Satan can transform himself into a angel of light. He said even his ministers into the ministers of righteousness. But all you got to do is talk to them a while. All you got to do is watch their lives, life a while. And you'll begin to see that there are some discrepancies when it comes down to the angels and the ministers and the apostles and the prophets and the evangelists of Jesus Christ. You will be able to know the difference because that's why Jesus said you will know them by their fruit. You will know them by their fruit. That's what, that's what he want to let you know. Not by no signs and wonders, because that's how many are going to be misled. I mean, how, what, what do you mean? You know, I see him doing all this. How, how, would, how would God do it? And I, I meant years ago, I asked God that. I said, well, Lord, because I remember the, in the book of Matthew, I said, Lord, I said, why would you allow them to perform if you know that they don't have your spirit? Because when you read that, he said he was going to tell them, depart from me, not depart from me. Because I know you not. Because all with your work that you did, you did in iniquity. He said, many at that day is going to say, Lord, I prophesied in your name. I cast out demons in your name. I healed in your name. Yeah, he said, yeah, you did all that. Why? You did it through the name of Jesus. Because it's in his name. 
but he's going to tell them depart from him. I know you not because all your work you did was in iniquity. You still was entertaining sin. The devil is a liar. That's why he told us. He said, I want you to be aware of them, but you shall know them by the fruit that they're bearing. You shall know them. Because I felt like I said, well, Lord, you know, how are we going to know? Because a lot of us, you know, have been caught up in, if I see that happen, man, I know that's a man of God. I know that's a woman of God. You can't tell me no different. But Jesus said, it's through my name. He said, but you're going to know them by their fruit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They've got to live according to my word. We got to be an example. That they can see Jesus Christ. Leaders, I speak over you today. Some of you are already in position and some of you are going to come into the position that God has already ordained for your life. I don't want you to look at nobody else but Jesus. Sure, a lot of times we might admire people, but I want you to look unto Jesus Christ because many people make excuses. Many people have fallen, for great, fallen from grace and they don't even have the oil on their lives like they used to and they know it. They know it, but they still pretending because a lot of time people won't be real with you. Before I became an, an ordained minister, but I gave my life to Christ and I was serving God uprightly and God had me operating in a gift. Y'all, I mean, time as I pray, by the time it got out my mouth, it was there. Manifestation was there. And I got out of the will of God. I was not preaching then. But I know what it is to be, to have a gift and now look like, because I stepped out of his will, now that gift is gone. I, I, I don't operate like that, like I used to. Some people, which try to fool the people that they get it so quick. No, it took me years, over 10 years. Because to, what well, I can't remember what I was saying, but. I got ordained as a minister in 2014. During that time, I made a vow to the Lord. Because see, I was born again. But I stepped out of the will of God. But I made one vow. I said, when, I, when, when it came forth that God was ordaining me to be a minister of the gospel. Because I really reject of being the minister. When the Lord first told me about preaching, I rejected it because I did not believe that that's who I was. And I told God, I said, no, because I said to be a minister, I have to live holy. So I don't know what my agenda was back then when he first spoke it. He spoke it, but it was five years later when I got ordained as a minister. And the Lord began to tell me that I would preach. I didn't want to accept it because I did not believe in women preachers. I woke up that, that morning after the Lord dealt with me. Well, me, my husband and I, we didn't believe in women's preachers. I mean, we grew up with women's preachers, but somehow we was like, mm -mm, you know, women ain't supposed to be doing that. I woke up, the Lord began to deal with me about it. A woman of God spoke it and I was like, mm -mm, she can't be talking about me. And so the Lord began to tell me and say, you will, you will preach my word. And I was like, no, I'm not. That next morning, my second oldest child was laying down and she could not, she was two years old, if no mistake. And she was asking me to help her to the bathroom. Now this child can walk. So I'm like, why would you be asking me to use the bathroom? My child could not walk. I had to take her to the bathroom and I was like, I didn't know whether she hurt her foot or what. So I ended up taking her, kind of fussing a little bit, like why you can't go to the bathroom yourself? And so when I took her to the bathroom, she laid down and that was unusual. And her feet began to come in together. I called my husband. I said, look, I have to take the child to the doctor. The Lord spoke to me plainly. When you get there, 
they won't find nothing wrong with her. And so as we were going to the doctor, now my child hands closing up. And I'm like, Lord, what, what in the world going on? Got to the doctor's office, sent me, send me to the hospital for some tests to be run on her. Got home. Before I got home, I started feeling a type of, I didn't feel good. I was not feeling good. A matter of fact, when I took my daughter to the hospital, the nurse said, mommy, you're not looking good. So I got home. I got the call. They said nothing was wrong. You telling me my child can't walk. You telling me my child hands are, are together. And you telling me that nothing is wrong. So I sat on that chair. I didn't feel good. My parents came over and my mother began to pray and the Lord said, give me a yes. I gave God a yes, but my yes was to get some relief and I wanted my child back walking. I wanted my child hands open up. I said, yes, God said, you don't mean it. And till I realized that honey, you playing, but God is not playing. I gave God a complete yes. My child hands went to open up. That next morning, my child hand was completely open. Her feet were back to normal and she was walking. So when God has charged you to do something, I know many may not understand. I'm not here to prove nothing to nobody, but to obey the voice of Jesus Christ. But I made a vow to God that when I became that minister or whatever he desired for me to be, I would not do anything to cause me to misrepresent him. Now, it took God. It took God. And I thank God for the woman of God that spoke into my life because I remember when she told me that God was going to have me preach. No, she said teach. And she said, you're going to, well, anyway. She began to say that, but she said, not right now, not right now. Because sometimes we can go ahead of God. That's why the Bible says we got to follow after his voice. Because sometimes you can go ahead of him. I thank God for that woman of God. To this day, I'm still praying and thanking God for allowing her to ever come into my life. Because she said, not right now. She said, because if you start now, you're going to fall flat on your face and you're going to be too embarrassed to get back up. And so I waited my time. And I didn't have no problem with waiting because I, I told God yes. But in the, in the inside, I said, well, he really going to have to make this happen. And he did. He did. That's why if we just let him lead and God, he going to do it all for you. He will do it all for you. I didn't know how God was going to do it. And I didn't worry about how he was going to do it. But he did it. Me and my family ended up going to a ministry that we didn't know anybody at this ministry. That's the place I got ordained as a minister. Because when God says something. It's going to come to pass in your life. But let him lead you. Let him go ahead of you. Because sitting up under that man of God, God began to deal with him who I was. I didn't go there talking about, oh God, no. Because mm -mm. I'm going to tell you the truth, I was still battling a little bit. But God would make it happen for you. But you got to let him lead you. Let him go before you. Because I encourage me to be, give him a complete yes. Yours may not be minister. Whatever God has for you to do. Give him that complete yes. Because some of you, things are tied up in your life because you won't say yes to him. You won't obey the voice of God, whatever he's telling you to do. Trust me. I question it. And I know many people go to 2 Timothy. And they began to say, you know, he, he said women ought, ought not to teach and, ha and assert authority over their husband. Have authority. No, you're not supposed to have authority over your husband. Because that's scripture. 
But when you go below that verse, he said, because E, e fell. Not Adam. Well, even Adam wasn't preaching. They were supposed to be taking care of the garden. So I'm not going to battle with anybody on what God says. For he said, my sheep know my voice. And a stranger, they won't follow. But I'm going to follow after him. And so my point was that when God ordained you, whether you be a man or whether you be a woman, to do a work for him, I encourage you to remain focused. I encourage you to remain holy. I encourage you to remain righteous. Will you make mistakes? Yes, I've made mistakes. I've had to repent. But let me tell you something. I wouldn't repent on committing no adultery. Because I feel like certain things you do will cause you not to walk in certain things that God wants you to walk in. And I'm like this. If God has chosen you, you need to be so grateful that he chose you, that you say within yourself, I will let nothing separate me from the love of God because he could have chose somebody else. But because he chose you, you should take it to heart. And that's what I did. And that's what I'm doing right now. I will not disappoint my father, Jesus Christ, and those that he has assigned to hear my voice as he speak through me. So I'm committed to do it God's way. Because that's what Jesus Christ is calling us to. When he told them and Peter, he said, we'll feed my sheep. Don't be Lord over them, but feed them and be an example. You're not an example. If you're a man of God, you're a woman of God, you commit fornication, you commit adultery, and you are in leadership. You are not being an example of Jesus Christ. Because you are leading them astray. And you try to make excuses on what you did. No, come with the truth. And let the people know. I know the spirit was there. I entertained the spirit. And I did not get delivered. But I advise you not to do it. Come with truth. And quit acting like it's okay. It's not okay. Jesus Christ didn't call you to be an example. In the wrong way, but be an example of holiness and righteousness unto him. That's what he's calling you to. So that's why we speak over you all. That's coming up that God is raising up in this hour. That you won't let nothing separate you from the love of God. Don't be looking at other people ministries. And say, oh, I remember when he committed adultery. I can remember when he committed fornication. Let me tell you something. The spirit, you know the spirit by the spirit. There are many people that's not operating in that anointing that they used to operate in because of things that they step out of the will of God. But I'm encouraging you, those that he's raising up in this hour, that take your eyes off a man and put your eyes on Jesus Christ. He's the example that we're supposed to follow. And when we live according to him, we examples to others. And that's what he's calling us to. And you don't have to be a leader to be an example. When I say leader, you don't have to be in an office of a prophet or pro to be an example. Saying that I'm a woman of God, I'm a man of God, you're an example right now that people are watching. They're watching how you conduct yourself. And they're watching how you do things. That's why we have to make sure that we are conducting ourselves in the ways of Jesus Christ. Wherever you may be in your home, you got to conduct yourself as that woman of God that God has called you to be. Men, you got to conduct yourself as that man of God that God has called you to be. 
So your children will see Christ. Your husband will see Christ. Your wife will see Christ. And those out there, they will see Christ. My sheep knoweth my voice. Be encouraged.